Are you ever unable to resist temptation, such as the temptation to eat unhealthy food? Or do you ever feel that you can't control your worries and stress effectively? Or do you ever struggle to complete arithmetic operations in your head? Or do you struggle to learn unfamiliar concepts, such as foreign words? If you experience any of these problems, your working memory might be slightly impaired and you might need to apply techniques that improve your working memory. But before we discuss working memory, we should outline and distinguish the three main categories of memory. To illustrate these three categories, I want you to complete three distinct tasks. First, I will show you a set of images, photos of celebrities when they were younger. Now in a moment, I will show you this set of images again, but change one image. Did you notice which image I changed? You probably did, but feel free to rewind the video just to check. To complete this task, you must have been able to store all the pictures in some memory store somewhere in your brain. That is, at least for a very short time, you must have been able to store lots of images simultaneously. And this store is often called iconic memory, and a variant that stores sounds such as the words that people utter instead of images is called echoic memory. And together, iconic memory and echoic memory are called sensory memory. But the contents of this store are fleeting and last about a second or actually even less. And if I now ask you which image I change, you're probably not as likely to answer the question correctly. Second, try to memorize these pictures. Now I'll now hide these pictures for more than a second. And in a moment, on the count of three, I'll actually ask you to, to name these pictures. One, two, three. Now to complete this task, you must have been able to store six or so pictures in another memory store somewhere in your brain. That is, at least for a few seconds, you must be able to store at least a few images, six or so, simultaneously. And this store is called immediate or short-term memory. But the contents of this store are temporary as well. If I asked you to name these objects tomorrow, you probably would likely forget. Third, I'd like you to name as many people from high school that you can. And to complete this task, you must have been able to store this information for a long time, certainly more than a few days, in some store in your brain. And also, you must have been able to store extensive information, certainly more than just a few names. And the memory store is not necessarily a specific object. So it's not like your brain houses like an external hard drive, unless, of course, you were the victim of some sort of strange prank. But the memory store acts something like this external hard drive. And this store is often called long-term memory and retains an infinite number of items indefinitely. So eventually, researchers decided that the short-term or immediate memory store is actually a misleading term. That is, this term overlooks the observation that short-term memory is not only some sort of passive store, but also entails some very active operations. So to illustrate, try these tasks. First, complete what is called the Stroop task. That is, rather than read these words, I want you to name the colour in which these words are printed, beginning with the first row of words. Okay, so ready, set, go. And the answer is green, red, purple, red, blue, green, purple, green, red. Now, I probably completed this task faster than you, and that's only because I cheated and read the answers on a separate sheet of paper. So second, now complete the goal shifting task. Specifically, again, I want you to name the colour in which these words are printed. However, for the middle column of words, I want you to actually read the words instead. All right. So ready, set, go. So it's green, green, purple, red, yellow, green, purple, red, red. And of course, I just cheated again. Okay, so third, I'm going to read a series of numbers. And I want you to indicate whenever one number is the same as a number that was presented three items earlier, such as say one, four, five, one. So here goes. One, three, two, 
five, nine, three, six, nine, two. Actually, nine just before was the answer here. Okay, it was the same as the item three items earlier. And then finally, I want you to complete what's called this trail making task. And that is, I want you to mentally connect the dots from so A to one, to B to two, to C to three, and so forth, as rapidly as you can. Now, each of these tasks utilize short-term memory. For example, to identify whenever one number is the same as the number that was presented three items earlier, you need to maintain at least four numbers in your mind for a few seconds. And to complete some of the other tasks, you needed to maintain the instructions in your mind. But this short-term memory is not really just a passive store, but seems to entail some active operations. For example, to identify whenever one number is the same as the number that was presented three items earlier, you needed to actually update and change the numbers in your mind, discarding numbers that are no relevant to the task anymore. Therefore, this store is now often called working memory because it involves active operations rather than merely a short-term store. So what are the features of working memory? Well, according to one theory, working memory comprises three parts. And the first part is called the phonological loop. And this part, in essence, stores the sounds, including the words that people utter. And the, the last few words I uttered now are stored in your phon phonological loop. Okay. The second part is called the visuospatial sketch pad. And that is, in essence, this part stores the objects that we see, such as the words that you're reading on this screen. Now, the third and most important part is called the central executive. And this part helps you develop and achieve your goals. Now, in particular, this part retrieves important information from long-term memory, such as, say, how to read words. And then using this information, this part, the central executive, also manipulates and utilizes the sounds and objects you store in the phonological loop and visuospatial sketchpad. For example, this part might retain the last three numbers in your task, but delete all the other numbers. Or in mathematics, this part might utilize mathematical skills stored in long-term memory to add or multiply to the numbers stored in your visuospatial pad. Obviously, if your working memory is impaired, you can't perform many operations such as, say, mathematics very well. But even more importantly, assuming that anything is actually more important than mathematics, if your working memory is impaired, you'd actually tend to be more impulsive. That is, you don't persist with your goals. Instead, you're often distracted by immediate temptations such as unhealthy food. And the reason is that if your working memory is impaired, you can't as readily maintain your goals in your mind. The information you need to maintain your goals, such as an image of looking healthier and instructions on how to become healthier, subside quite quickly. So your goals often vanish. Instead, your immediate needs, rather than your goals, influence your behavior. You therefore are not as likely to thrive in life. So to improve your life, you need to actually improve your working memory. But can people enhance their working memory? Is this part of the brain something you can change? Well, researchers have uncovered several conditions, circumstances, or activities that could affect your working memory. For example, I'd like you to now identify two of your strengths, that is talents or qualities in which you are proud, maybe such as your kindness, humor, your dedication, honesty, loyalty, and so forth. In addition, I'd like you to com contemplate your values. That is, what are the aspirations you'd like to achieve in 10 years? And how would you like the world to be in the future? What's most important to you? Is it your status, your family, social justice, wealth, friendships, or what? And what activities have you undertaken that align to these values recently? Now, this task in which you clarify your strengths or values is called self-affirmation. And self-affirmation tends to decrease the number of distracting thoughts or worries you experience. Consequently, after people complete these tasks, their working memory 
is not as likely to be distracted by unnecessary concerns. Their working memory actually improves. Second, when people feel excited, energized and rewarded, then working memory also improves. Novel, exciting experiences can improve working memory. And these feelings tend to increase the level of a brain chemical called dopamine. And this brain chemical tends to enhance the brain region that underpins working memory called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex that are close to the front of your head. Third, according to some research, if people often practice tasks that utilize working memory, their working memory may improve. Therefore, perhaps you could attempt to memorize information more or perform more operations in your head, or you could practice the four tasks that I presented before. Now, admittedly, this research is controversial. After you practice one task, your performance on similar tasks does tend to improve, but your performance on other different tasks that utilize working memory may not improve. Nevertheless, such practice is certainly not harmful, but perhaps not as helpful as researchers once believed.